In this video, we're going to be looking at the UK's electricity transmission and distribution networks. So in effect, this is how electricity is able to flow around the country. So we'll begin by looking at a brief outline of the electricity network, and then we're going to look at how that's split into both a transmission network, which is maintained by the national grid, and a distribution network, which is actually maintained by the distribution network operators. So in addition, we're going to look at how electricity is generated and from what locations around the country. And we're also going to look at how energy tends to flow around the country. We have something called a north to south power flow. Now, finally, we're going to look at something called distributed generation, which is primarily for areas where they have a shortage or a deficit of the electricity they produce when compared to the electricity that they consume. So to begin with, let's look at a schematic diagram of what the UK electricity network looks like. So if we begin up in the top left hand corner, we have large scale generation. Now that could be generation from the combustion of fossil fuels, it could be from renewable energy such as a wind farm, or it could be from a nuclear power station. But specifically here we're talking about large scale generation and we'll talk about other types of generation later on. We see here that typically the energy leaving a large scale generation site or a power station would be around 23,000 volts. Now as we move from left to right, we need to step up that voltage. So as we can see, we're going to go from 23 kilovolts all the way up to 400 kilovolts. Now there's a very important reason for that. Once electricity has been generated, it needs to be transmitted. So we have the transmission network and the transmission network runs the entire length of the country. Now, if electricity is being generated, say, in the north of England, and then that electricity is being used in the south of England, then we need to transport that electricity quite long distances. Now, the idea behind stepping up the voltage to very high voltages is that by stepping up the voltage, we step down the current. Therefore, the electricity that's being transmitted has a much lower current and it's less likely to incur energy losses. So the whole idea between the high voltage or the transmission network is that by transmitting electricity at high voltage, we can reduce the amount of loss that occurs. So the transmission network can range anywhere between 400 kilovolts and around 275 kilovolts. And that will be largely dependent on the distances that are being covered. When we move closer to towns or built up areas, we need to step that voltage down and we step it down to around 132 kilovolts. Now this is an important point here. We see it's marked as the grid supply point and this is where ownership of the network switches. So on the right hand side, the 400 kilovolt and the 275 kilovolt is classified as the transmission network and that would be owned by the national grid and maintained by the national grid. Once we step down to 132 kilovolts, we're into what we call the distribution network. And ownership and control now belongs to distribution network operators. Now 132 kilovolts is still too high for delivering electricity to factories and residential premises. So what we would need to do again is step that voltage down. Now typically the voltages that are supplied to large factories and heavy industry is 33 kilovolts. So still very high voltage in order to operate machinery and so on. For the supply of electricity to medium factories and light industry, we have voltages of around 11 kilovolts. And for residential properties, we step that down again to 230 volts. So the standard main supply in domestic properties is 230 volts. In small scale factories, we have 11 kilovolts and in large factories, 33 kilovolts. So that's what makes up our network. We have generation, we have transmission, we have distribution, and then we have supply. So let's take each of those elements in turn. And we're going to begin with the UK transmission network, which as we said, is maintained by the national grid. Now the transmission network runs the full length of the country. On this map here, we can see both gas pipes and we can also see our overhead power lines. And that's because the national grid not only maintains the transmission network, but it also maintains the gas supply network. But we're going to be focusing on electricity. So over on the left hand side, 
we see the colors that relate to our overhead power lines at 400 kilovolts and our red lines relate to our overhead power lines at 275 kilovolts. So from this map, we can see that the national grid is maintaining the high voltage transmission network throughout the UK. And the high voltage network will be connecting towns and cities all around the UK. Now we have a number of different sources of electricity and here we're going to be talking about the large scale generation. So we're going to be looking at traditional power plants or fossil fuel burning plants. We're going to look at some of the offshore wind capacity. We're going to look at the locations of our nuclear power plants. And we're also going to discuss imports or imported electricity. So on this image, we can see the locations of our coal fired power stations. And some of these will also be combusting natural gases. So we see a relatively even spread all around the UK. Next we have our offshore wind farms and these are going to be responsible for producing significant amounts of energy and once again we see them surrounding the UK coastline. Now note that the voltages that are being produced at these wind farms would need to be stepped up to 400 kilovolts before it could be fed into the national grid. We've also spoken in earlier tutorials about how that electricity also needs to be supplied at 50 hertz. Next, we have the sites of our nuclear power stations. And on here, we have two things indicated. We have sites that are currently generating. And in brackets, this is the date that they're expected to close. And we also have our potential sites. You'll notice that some of the potential sites are actually in the same locations as the current sites. But all of these, once again, will be feeding into the national grid at 400 kilovolts and 50 hertz. Next, we have our electricity interconnectors. And this is actually something that came as a little bit of a surprise to me, is that we actually import quite a significant amount of our electricity from other countries in Europe. So, for example, down here in the southeast of England, we have the interconnector between France and England or France and Angleterre. And that interconnector will be providing electricity from France into the UK. So we're actually paying to import electricity from other countries. And we see a number of other different interconnectors here. The different thicknesses of the lines indicates how much energy we're capable of importing through those lines. And the colour codes relate to something called cap and floor. And all that means is that there's upper and lower limits set on how much energy we can import through these different interconnectors. We'll talk about interconnectors again when we talk about something called the security of supply or how secure our electricity supply is in the UK. Okay, so now we have a brief understanding as to how different power stations contribute to the national grid. So we've looked at the delivery or the generation of electricity and now we're going to consider the other side which is the distribution and supply. So just as a reminder, we have our transmission network, which we've spoken about, maintained by the national grid. And then we have our distribution network, which is maintained by various different distribution network operators. So all around the country, we have different distribution network operators. For example, in the northeast of England, we have Northern Power Grid. In the southeast, we have UK Power Networks. And in the southwest, we have Western Power Distribution. So there's different network operators all around the country responsible for maintaining the distribution networks. So we have electricity being generated. We have that electricity being fed into our transmission network. And then we have the transmission network feeding all of those independent distribution networks. Now, whilst we're on the topic of the UK electricity network, one other thing that's worth considering is something called the North-South Power Flow. We've already looked at the locations of our various different power stations, and we've also looked at the locations of our different distribution network operators. But what we haven't discussed is the unique challenges that each of those network operators may face. So on this simplified diagram, we see the locations where our primary generating capacity exists, and we also see how that compares to demand. So we have the key here at the top, generation in black and demand in grey. Now at various different locations, what we're looking at is how much energy is being contributed and how much energy is being used. So for example, in the far top left hand corner, 
we have some offshore capacity here that's producing electricity or generating electricity. There's no demand, so that electricity is being fed straight into the grid. By contrast, in the top right hand corner, we do have some generation, but if you look carefully, we can see that the demand bar on the right hand side is slightly taller. Therefore, we see a net flow from left to right. And that net flow will be to offset the fact that demand is slightly higher than generation. Now we can trace that down to the UK because over here on the left hand side in Wales, once again, we can see that generation is larger than demand. So we see energy flowing from left to right. As we get to the Midlands, again, we see generation higher than demand. So all of the electricity is flowing down from north to south. In the far bottom right hand corner, we have our interconnector with France, which is contributing electricity. We have generation larger than demand, so we have electricity flowing from right to left. As you would expect in the capital, so in London, we have relatively high demand and generation potential is considerably less. So we see a lot of energy flowing towards the capital. But the other location where we see energy flowing is down into the southwest of England. We have very small generating capacity and we have demand that outweighs the generating capacity. So let's briefly discuss one of the potential solutions. And the solution is something called distributed generation. So this diagram relates to the earlier schematic because in the top left hand corner we see central generation or our large scale generation and we see that being fed into the transmission network. We see our grid supply point where ownership transfers to our distribution network operators. But it's the bottom of the diagram that differs here. Instead of only drawing electricity from the transmission network, what we see in this instance is we see smaller scale generation being fed directly into the distribution network. So let's consider a couple of different things. First of all, we have micro generation, and this might be solar panels on someone's roof, or it might be a small scale wind turbine. But micro generation encourages residential properties to generate the electricity that they're going to use. Anything they don't use will be fed back into the grid, but it's not going to be fed into the national grid or the transmission network at 400 kilovolts. Instead, it's going to be fed back into the distribution network. The idea behind this is that there's no need for that electricity to be fed into the national grid because it isn't going to need to be transmitted to other locations within the country. Let's take, for example, the southwest of England. We know that they have an energy deficit, so any electricity they produce is going to be used in the southwest of England. It certainly isn't going to need to be transmitted northwards. Alongside that, we have small scale generation. And again, this might be a small onshore wind farm or a solar array, as an example. Now that generation is being used to supply local factories and commercial offices. Once again, any surplus is going to be fed into the distribution network. Here we see active distribution. It's not going to be fed into the transmission network. So to summarize, in this video, we've looked at the UK electricity network as a whole, and we've broken that down into generation, transmission, distribution, and supply. We've also discussed the north-south power flow and how more generation tends to occur in the north of England, whereas more demand occurs in the south of England. And finally, we've mentioned a possible solution of distributed generation, where energy is generated and consumed within the same region.